and Captain John Ward must pull out all the stops. Come on, baby. Get up there. To save it. Also, a prized cruiser could be the victim of a hit and run. We've got to really worry about this vessel flipping over. That vessel could drop down on top of the diver. We don't know why he's not responding. And a sunken pleasure boat poses a deadly threat. we got to get this boat out of here before somebody gets hurt. In southwestern Virginia is Smith Mountain Lake. The beautiful wooded shoreline, balmy summers, and pristine waters draw thousands of pleasure boaters every year. But all this traffic can result in accidents. A cruiser has mysteriously sunk at its mooring, and to settle this case is a crack dive squad. Ex-state trooper Brian Owenby, and ex-sergeant Brian Stafford. Overseeing the team is Sergeant Stafford's father, Tim. Where's your mask? Right in front of me. You look better if they don't anyway. You know, I'll be coming from being a state trooper. He was a sergeant for years. You know, everything they do is by the book, by the book. There is no by the book on salvage work. You're, you're always running into something different. The boat is half submerged and sitting at an angle dangerous operating conditions for the divers. We've got to really worry about this vessel flipping over or capsizing as we start the lifting process. If the vessel's not stabilized, that vessel could drop down on top of the diver, causing a catastrophic failure in the system or just entrapping him down there as well. Even today's great weather could disrupt the operation. It's a beautiful sunny day out. There's probably going to be boats out there running around on the water. That's going to create a lot of waves. So in an open lake like this, there's a lot of difficulties we come across. First, the team needs to check the boat for damage, which may also give evidence as to how it sunk. In for what you got? talking over each other one at a time. The divers hunt for leaks, and soon enough, they find something. What'd you say? What kind of damage? That looked like damage on the right-hand side. The rub rail's all messed up. I don't know if something hit her, or would he had it parked the other way, you reckon? You think? May have been. They fear that it could have been a possible hit and run. With evidence of reckless driving, the divers will need to be extremely careful as they raise the boat. He said, and it looks like the vents have been pulled away from the vessel. The team will need to patch the vent or lift it out of the water before they can drain the boat. How far do we have to get it up to get above the vent? Info. The cruiser is in an awkward position. Under the pier to solve the problem, the team plans to attach airbags to either side of the hull. Then, they will inflate the bag on the port side, which will pull the boat away from the dock. After that, they'll inflate the starboard side. If their plan works, the boat will level out and lift. The divers search for the mount to the outboard motor, the sturdiest spot on most motorboats and a good place to tie the 4,000-pound lifting bags. Nothing at all. So the prop's underneath the boat. Twin engine inboard, what it looks like. We've got a twin engine inboard here, which means there's nothing coming out the back. There is nowhere strong enough on this fiberglass boat to attach the 4,000-pound bags. And because the boat's sitting on the bottom, it's harder to get anything to work, and there's nothing to hook to on the back to pick the boat up enough to get things where we want. This salvage is going to be trickier than they thought. It's going to be trial and error. Smith Mountain Lake. Tim Stafford and his team are trying to raise a damaged cruiser that's mysteriously sunk in shallow water. 
believe it or not, when we lift these, it's better if they're completely underwater a lot of times than being half out. Uh, because when they're sitting like this, sometimes rigging, it makes it harder. Sure enough, Tim's divers can't find anywhere on the back of the boat to secure flotation bags. So what we're going to have to do is put uh, what we call belly bands. There are straps that's going to go underneath with attachment points every foot. We're going to strap them around it, try to take two 4,000 pound bags and uh, hook them together and try to get this thing up enough to pump it. All right, I'll get it rigged up, look over the rest of the boat, make sure there's no windows open anywhere. The team gets to work. Tim passes down the belly band and the divers begin threading it beneath the boat. They've got the strap underneath the boat. They're just trying to pull it, and they got to get it even on both sides before we can put a ratchet on it. So we're not lifting this boat on a tilt. It requires constant communication, but diver Brian Owenby has stopped replying. I'm not getting anything on comms on him. Just drop your strap, because you can come back to it and go check on him. We don't know why he's not responding. So send another diver back around to see if we can see what's going on. The other diver searches the far side of the boat and finds Owenby in good shape. M4. He's good. His comm unit's not working. It's quit working on him. It does happen occasionally. Using one pair of comms, the divers stay close as they continue to rig the boat. Safety comes first on this. Divers come first in front of everything. But it's very physical work, and diver Owenby needs to surface. See ya. Yep. Heavy breathing has caused carbon dioxide to accumulate inside his mask. When we're using full face masks, you're actually filling up that mask every time you exhale. Part of it's coming out, part of it's staying in the mask. So you got about every five minutes, you need to purge it. And by purging it, you're pushing on the front of the reg to blow a little fresh air in to push that stale air out. If you build up too much CO2, you're gonna pass out. So it's one of the dangers of full face mask diving in a working environment. The divers must try not to exhaust themselves, but their time under the water is limited. Good on air. Once they run out of air, they'll need to take a break. So with time against them. All right, are you ready? Tim must get the airbag to the divers as fast as possible. I thought that shackle was going to go through the windshield. You have no faith in me. I never saw you throw a bag. Sure. <laughs> you had faith. For the greatest lift, the divers need to attach the bags as far down as possible. They attach the port side bag. All right, starboard bag's ready. Where are you? He's there. Yeah, I know. I just give it him. Okay. <laughs> and not long after. They fix the starboard bag, too. With the divers out of the water, yeah. the team fires up the air pump. You should be about ready. The bags begin to inflate, and the boat starts to lift. But then... The port side bag has ripped from its mount. Back come completely off, I don't worry. All right, you got to get retanked. We got to see what happens. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. If In Virginia, Tim Stafford and his team attempt to raise a mysteriously sunken cruiser. But one airbag is ripped from its strap. We tie to these loops on what we call a belly band. It's really just a loop band that goes under the bottom. But what's happened, you can see where these loops are sewn in. The loop that we were tied to ripped off the strap. So we're gonna have to go and find another loop underneath to go to the next one down. But if the strap breaks again, the team will need to start back at square one. My biggest concern, we're gonna rip another loop. It's already broke one. It's only 2,000 pounds of lift, and those, each strap's actually rated at 6,000 pounds of lift. So I'm not sure it's gonna hold at all. 
but we got to get the boat up. To save losing more time, the team chooses to secure a new strap. The divers suit back up. The dive team runs a new strap while the crew topside deflate the bag. Then the divers clip it back on. I can hear them ratcheting. I can hear the ratchet going. Yeah. And strap it down. Take two. <laughs> they fire up the pump and once again, the bags begin to inflate. This time, the divers wait on standby in case the new strap breaks. Let's, let's make sure she's gonna come up. Now she's starting to roll. That's about where it was last time, wasn't it? A little higher. So far, so good. All right, let's start. You know, start to pump. The team must now pump all of the water out of the boat. But the boat doesn't appear to be draining. Taking in water are two submerged vents. Get your ice bags to cover the vents. You got some? Hey, Brian, here's two. To solve the problem, the divers use plastic bags to cover the vents. Can you see the bag there that he put on? It's just a trash bag, and the water pressure's leaving inside, so it's kind of sucking in against it. She's coming up. This vent's out of the water. We got the front gunnels out. The front gunnel on the bow's out. The boat is almost afloat but no one knows why it originally sank. So the team needs to make sure it doesn't sink again as soon as it's up. As you can see, it's coming up. Uh, once we get it completely pumped out, we're gonna start checking to see if we can figure out what caused it to sink. Maybe it's cracked, it's old, water pressure pushing in from the outside, it takes on enough water to go down. The boat is finally afloat, and the recovery team will be able to examine the damaged hull to find the cause of its sinking. But for now, it remains a mystery. To ensure the boat doesn't sink again, the recovery team prepares to tow it away. And the Lake Hickory scuba dive squad can stand down.